idea of uh, how we treat vehicles in SOCARS Legion. Uh, and then we're going to go over to the practical training uh, where we're going to cover. So tonight we are going to be going over uh, both air and armor. In regards to air, we're going to be talking about galaxy drops, Valkyrie drops, air balls or scythe balls, and finally battle gals or galaxy balls. Uh, and then in regards to armor, we're going to be talking about armor columns as a whole, and we're going to be talking about the uses of armor columns in different situations. Uh, so everyone, in general, and guys, I'm going to ask you to try to avoid those mines if you guys can. Please, let's not throw those that many mines in C4 here because they, they make them bad and we're also recording. So let's try to keep it, uh, let's try to keep it clear in here. Uh, everyone, probably most of you guys already know that Planetside 2 has uh, a kind of a hard time by implementing vehicles into, into the objective play. So... We've had several iterations, the Combined Arms Initiative, uh, they've tried to bring vehicles more and more into the objective end game of Planet Side 2, but so far they, they you know, haven't made a, a good progress in that area, and right now as it stands, vehicles are still kind of in an awkward position uh, in Planet Side. They are a very effective tool for very specific situations, but in general, they are not as effective as playing infantry in the field. Uh, if you are looking for, uh, you know, just being effective map-wise and strategy-wise. So what we're going to try to do here is give you guys several examples and several tactics that you guys can employ and still be effective playing the alert and playing the map uh, with your squads and platoons out there. And uh, so to start off, we are going to be talking about air. Now, air guys, as you all know, aircraft in Planet Side 2, they are a very, very uh, effective way to kill your enemies, first of all. So they are a, a great uh, force multiplier. But they are also the best transport system that we have in Planet Side 2. So uh, aircraft can be used both as a means to kill your opponents and also as a means to transport your platoon. We're going to be going over both of those sides of aircraft tonight. And the one we're going to start with is the Galaxy Draw. Now, I'm sure most of you guys already know how to do a Galaxy Drop. I'm sure most of you have already been to a Galaxy Drop. But we're going to discuss it uh, in detail here, give it the pros and cons, and just talk overall about how to do a proper gal drop. So we're going to do a galaxy drop right here on the VR training. And now, guys, I'm going to move a few of you over to Delta Squad so we can have a better, just a better idea of, a, a, you know, generalistic gal drop. And I'm going to give uh, Delta Squad to you, Super Tris. Got it. Whoa, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Failed to set squad member. Okay, looks like it's bugged. Yeah, that's, that's because we had a whole squad leave. Remember the Delta squad? No, we, yeah, we can do it like this. Like, it doesn't matter. We have enough space in here. Now, guys. Uh, the proper way for you guys to call for a, for a, a gal drop is you basically ask for your entire platoon to redeploy back to the warp gate. As a platoon leader, you guys already know where you're going to be using your galaxy drop. So it is also your responsibility to request for your platoon composition. So right now, guys, we're going to be simulating a gal drop uh, to a point. And uh, I, I want to make sure we have enough classes and we have uh, enough resources to maintain a point hold that we talked about yesterday. So I want to see in this platoon with you guys, maxes, engineers, and medics. I don't want a lot of maxes. I just need a few per squad. I need mostly uh, medics and I need a few engineers as well. Now, as a general rule, guys, whenever pulling a gal drop, you should ask the squad leaders and the squad leaders alone to pull the galaxies for you, uh, because the squad leaders should be people that you guys, you know, trust enough to drive a galaxy without killing it. So, 
would be a better idea for you to request for each squad leader to pull a galaxy so that's what we're doing here uh, each one of my squad leaders go ahead and pull your galaxies and we're gonna get everyone inside uh, you you should tell your platoon to try to stick to your squad specific galaxy if you can so alpha squad you guys are gonna get into my galaxy bravo squad you're getting in the bravo galaxy that's behind you and charlie squad jump into the Charlie Galaxy that Horace is probably going to get for us here. Uh, now, if a squad leader doesn't have enough nanites for a galaxy, and this is going to happen with you guys a lot out there in the field, a squad leader should request for someone else to pull the galaxy for him. Uh, in this case here, I'm not sure if Horace is here with us now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I imagine. So everyone, Charlie Galaxy is up. Let's let's get one up, guys. No, I don't oh. see one. Yeah, Horace, if you don't have enough, ask for someone got to. Enemy engineer spotted. Do you yeah, need Blade nanites in uh, VR simulation? You don't. No. Yeah. Okay, so we have a Charlie Galaxy up. Charlie Squad, let's jump into that galaxy. Now, as soon as you guys have all the galaxies up, uh, you don't necessarily need, as I said, to have a squad-specific galaxy, guys. It just makes it easier to make sure all galaxies are balanced out. Now, as soon as you guys have all your galaxies on the ready, you should go ahead, look at the map, identify the place you guys are going to want to drop. Make sure you mark all with a platoon waypoint directly where you want your galaxies to drop. So in this case, we're going to be dropping on platoon waypoint. Now, all galaxies are clear to take off. Let's start moving out, guys. Now, with the galaxy, uh, now here, we're going to be regrouping the galaxies here for a second, guys, because I want to give you a few tips uh, for when we're flying here. The first of them is how to properly fly a galaxy. Everyone, you probably have already heard about flying sideways with a galaxy. And basically what that means is that you can add both the momentum of your W key, that's the forward momentum, with your ascending momentum, so your upwards momentum that you get from pressing the space key. Now, all you need to do for you to get that, and I hope my squad leaders can do this here as well, is you just need to tilt your galaxy a little bit to the right and then fly pressing both W and space, just like I'm doing now. I hope the other galaxies can do it as well. And by doing this, your galaxy will be moving a lot faster than you would by just pressing W forward, right? You guys can go ahead and pull your own galaxies here and try it out, test it out by yourselves if you want. Um, now, guys, before we drop here, before we drop on platoon waypoint, no one drops yet. You guys stay on the galaxy for a second here because I'm going to give you the second tip for a gal drop and that is that everyone that is inside of a galaxy will always drop and this is also true for the Valkyries as well you guys will also always leave the galaxy on the left side so every time you guys drop you're gonna be dropping from the left side of the galaxy and that is why every time you are flying a galaxy you should try to tilt the galaxy to the right whenever you are flying because if you do the opposite and you tilt the, the galaxy to the left, whenever people drop, you are going to hit them with the galaxy itself. That means you can kill your own squad if you fly the wrong way. So keep that in mind, everyone. You are always going to be dropping people from the left side of the galaxy. And that's why you should fly tilting it to the right as well. Because that means you are going to avoid killing your own people as you guys drop. So now you guys know a few more things about the galaxy. Let's all go ahead and drop. And uh, in, in general, guys, you should always try as a platoon leader to keep your galaxy together uh, to make sure you have a drop you know, as, close, as close as you can to one another, you know, drop as a full platoon. And in general, the squad leaders are going to ditch the galaxies as soon as you guys drop. So squad leaders, you ditch the galaxies, everyone drop together on the point. Everyone is alive because you, you all know how to fly a galaxy and you are not flying on the wrong side. Everyone dropped in the right time. Now, another good way for everyone to drop from the galaxy is if you are the galaxy pilot, you can have your uh, page up, I believe. 
uh, the one that gives you access to the vehicle permissions. If you look in the vehicle permissions while you are flying your galaxy, you can lock your galaxy just as you are flying past the place you want to drop to effectively eject everyone from your galaxy simultaneously. That's another way that you as a squad leader can do a more effective gal drop if you want. You can basically kick everyone out of, of the galaxy simultaneously once you reach the point you want them to drop in. Just need to have it open on your screen and as soon as you fly by you drop everyone by ejecting them out of your galaxy. And you guys are free to try this out as well with anyone uh, at any time. I highly uh, recommend you guys do so in the future. Now, I have one key thing that I need to talk to you guys about here. And uh, it's that we have started the training session uh, about 10 minutes ago. And it took us more than five minutes just to prepare and do this gal drop. Now, we need to keep in mind that I'm teaching you guys here a bunch of stuff. But as a platoon leader out there leading a public SQL platoon, you guys are probably going to be doing the same thing as well. So what I'm taking away from all of this, guys, is that a galaxy drop is a very effective and powerful way to move your platoon with a lot of resources, including maxes, uh, something you can't do with anything else other than a steel rain. But it is also a very slow way to move people around. Whenever you are gal dropping with your platoon, you are going to be very, very slow. Uh, this can be, you know, bypassed if you are in the start of an alert or if you have a buffer base or if you want to get stuck somewhere. So time can be, you know, spent by doing a galaxy drop. But in general, pulling a gal drop is going to take a lot of time out of your timer. And that time, that's time that could be better spent by doing something else. So platoon leaders, you guys are going to need to judge whether or not you have the time to waste uh, for you to organize a gal drop all the way from the warp gate. And that's going to be down to the specifics of the facility that you're going to be attacking. Uh, if it's a base that's it's very hard to get to with other logistics, if it's a nice point hold base that you can get a full platoon on top of uh, and then go from there, that's also a, a good thing to consider. And I'll give you guys a few examples here. Uh, you all go ahead and open up your maps. I want you all to open up your maps. We are going to go to Amherst real quick. You guys can see the Amherst map uh, even despite it being taken by the Terran Republic right now. And I'll give you guys one quick example here. Uh, Sangre West Gate, that's all the way up north, close to Sangre Amp Station. It's to the left of the Sangre Amp Station. If you guys go to Sangre West Gate, that's a base that's pretty much a tower. It's several buildings, one on top of, the, of another, uh, and it's very hard to get all the way up to the top. And the point room, so the capture point on that base, is all the way on the last floor. So all the way up, high above like the entirety of the base, that's where the point is. And a gal drop on that base is going to be a very effective gal drop because you, you get everyone in there. It's very hard for you to get up there uh, with any other means. So you just get your platoon up there with several maxes. You lock down the point in a hold just like we trained yesterday with deployables and all that. So that is a good example of a good base for you guys to drop. And with practice, you guys are going to see several other examples just like that one. Now, guys, uh, I'll give you a few minutes here, a few seconds here to think about a few questions uh, while I move some people around because I'm going to move people to Alpha Squad to make space on Charlie. You have Charlie open, right, Horace? Sounds good. One, any questions about Galaxy Drops in general? This will be as good as new. I just wanted to thank you for stressing the amount of time that... that to the vehicles? holding those. <laughs> Yep. Although the yeah. chat, the time for from the warp gate to the point, because sometimes it, it takes more than a minute, and you have two minutes on the clock. So, exactly. I have a question then. Go ahead, Chris. All right, let's say you need to do a coordinated drop that requires you to use, you know, galaxies, but you don't have the time. What do you recommend to do then? 
Yep. You need the coordinated drop, but you don't have time. That's the second tactic that we're going to talk about tonight. And those would be a Valkyrie drop. Uh, we're going to talk about it. It's the second one that we're going to talk about here tonight. Uh, but before we move ahead to that one, uh, does anyone have any other questions about the Galaxy drops? I think you guys have a lot of information here. Probably some of them you guys didn't know about. Uh, especially if you guys are going to be flying the Galaxies. Always remember that you drop on the left side. So avoid killing your own squad by dropping them on the right side of the galaxy. And also the flying sideways. That you guys can go ahead and test it out here on the VR training to get a good hold of it. If you guys want to go ahead and drive the galaxies around. So any other questions guys about galaxy drops? Yeah, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, is there any reason to keep the galaxies around after the drop? So in most situations I would say that no. Uh, you are going to be wanting to drop and get everyone big down in a point because a galaxy drop is usually uh, a way to get you to a point hold, right? So you want to get there, you want to dig down into the point, put up all your entrenchments, and then try to stay in there. Now, there are a few situations where you will want to keep your galaxies up. And if you want... You yeah, yeah. If you are, if if the base is already almost taken, uh, and you want to move ahead to a next base, you can pick up your maxes once again. Uh, also, in a case uh, where you may need to drop again, like you think uh, you are gonna need drop here, clear out a base, and then drop again. So it might be the case where, like, let's say I'm going to a base. Uh, but then, as I'm flying to said base, they get a back cap on one of my bases. That would mean I would need to preemptively drop to re-secure the back cap. And in that situation, I would want to keep my galaxies up to re-pick everyone up, you know, get everyone back in the galaxies and drop in the base that I primarily wanted to. So, in, in general, there will, there will be situations where you want to keep your galaxies up, but I can't give you specifics for that. It's going to be on a case-by-case -case scenario here. Now, any other questions? One question? more quick question. Yeah, one more quick yep, question. What about um, spawning on squad leader and f having the gal, like, sp spawning the gal, or, sorry, flying the gal part of the way there and then have people spawn in there? I know you don't get maxes, but is there a reason not to do that or to do that? Exactly. So that's what I was going to talk about right now. So uh, everyone, the second way that you can do a gal drop, and this is a, a faster way for you to do a gal drop with less power, because as, as he mentioned, you can't get the, galaxy, the, the maxes, would be, now here, I'm going to, you know, give you guys just an example here of how it would be doing. And let's say that right here where we all are is the base that we are currently capping, right? So as a platoon leader, I would go ahead and say, okay, only my squad leaders, only my squad leaders, you guys are going to be redeploying back to the warp gate, and you guys are going to be getting galaxies from the warp gate. Only my squad leaders, the rest of the platoon stay here, rest of the platoon stay here. Now, if you are a squad leader and you don't have the nanites to pull a galaxy, you would and ask someone from your squad to redeploy instead now the squad leaders alone are gonna get galaxies from the warp gate in this case my squad leaders here you guys are gonna go ahead and pull another galaxy once again from platoon waypoint all of you guys stay there now this would work uh, if you wanted to move your platoon and you knew that you had a platoon with high cohesion uh, gal drops are usually extremely uh, new player friendly and casual friendly as well because most people will know how to redeploy to the warp gate and just get inside the galaxy. However, getting into a galaxy on the move is a little bit harder. So if you are going to be doing that, you're going to need to teach your platoon how to do it. Uh, and once you have your squad be the galaxies up, yep. you're going to give them the squad waypoint. So we have all the galaxies up, everyone. Uh, you can all start redeploying. Galaxies are moving to platoon waypoint now. Squad leaders move out. All squad redeploy into the galaxies. The galaxies should be on the top left side of your screen. Top left side of your screen are squad options. You should see the galaxies in there. Let's redeploy everyone. We are en route. Get everyone in here. 
Now, this should be a way for you to get everyone into the galaxies without necessarily needing uh, to go back to the warp gate. And I think it might be broken here on the VR training. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> because yeah. this is a deployed Sunday here. Yeah, yeah, you don't, have the, you don't have the squad options in here, but it would work in the live play. You guys would be able to see the squads in there. And you can redeploy the entire platoon to the galaxy without necessarily needing to get them back to the warp gate. And that's a much, much faster way to do it. So you can do this, but again, it, it's going to be less new player friendly. It's You are probably going to get less cohesion with it. Uh, and it's going to be completely dependent on how you teach your platoon to do it because it is more complex right so more questions any more questions i've got a question go ahead go ahead um is it a good tactic to run logistic what is it logistic specialist when using the galaxy and not necessarily not necessarily for the galaxy because what logistics specialist does is basically what the galaxy already has as a passive system Right, okay. so the galaxy already kind of comes with logistics specialists, because uh, what logistics does, it's it's allow your squad to respond to your vehicle, but it does that to all vehicles. So you could be in a mag rider and someone could jump into your mag rider, but they can already do that passively in the galaxy anyway. So you don't necessarily need the logistics specialist in the galaxy. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, everyone, now, uh, if we don't have any questions, I'm going to go over to the second tactic here. Uh, any more questions, guys, about this topic? I have one, yeah. Go ahead. Um, how effective is enemy anti-air against the galaxy drop, and conversely, on the defense against the galaxy drop, how much anti-air is possible? Yeah, you can usually go through. Like, unless your enemies have, like, a massive amount of AA, you can usually go past uh, the flak and just drop on point just because galaxies have such a large health pool so you should be able to you know even if you get there very damaged you should be able to get close enough to the point uh, to where you can drop now it is you know also a general rule for gal drops that you should always try to fly max altitude when flying yep. galaxy don't stay close to the ground every time you are doing a gal drop Tell your squad and platoon to fly as high as they can to avoid flak from AA guns. Uh, and that's and what from being spotted as well. Being spotted, it's a little yeah. A little harder to be spotted when you're high. Now, whenever you guys are close to the point, whenever you guys are getting close to the point, you can go ahead and dip down and start going closer to the ground for your uh, drop to, you know, just get to the point faster. Uh, but as you are flying to that point, you should try to stay at max altitude, as a general rule. Anyone, if no more questions, we're going to be moving over to the next topic here, guys. And the next one is going to be simply a Valk drop. Now, everyone, a Valkyrie drop is the, uh, I would say, the opposite to a Gal drop. And we are all going to come here to the tower real quick uh, to take a look at it. Now, the way a Valk drop works is it, it necessarily is a galaxy drop in a smaller scale, but also in a faster, much, much faster way. I, I would argue that a Valk drop is currently the fastest way that you can idea, transport a platoon from, from point A to point B, and that is by uh, design. The, the Valkyries were basically designed to be a fast method of transportation for high cohesion, uh, for high cohesion players. So basically what you're going to want to do uh, for a Valk drop is you are firstly going to identify a base on the map with an air terminal. That can be any base, uh, probably the closest one to the point you want to drop as possible. That can be a tech plant, an amp station, a larger facility with an air terminal. Anything that you can spawn a Valkyrie in, you are going to check to see if the terminals are not hacked. So basically you go to the map, you redeploy, you click on that base and see if you can spawn a Valkyrie from the map screen, from that base. And then you ask your squad to start spawning Valkyries from that base. And 
from this point on, you will want your squads to redeploy inside the Valkyries, just like we just did uh, with the Galaxies. So you try to get everyone to redeploy directly into the Valkyries. You are never going to land a Valkyrie, guys. As a platoon leader, uh, as a, a Valkyrie pilot, you guys are never going to land to pick up people. We're just doing it here now because it's a training session. But you, you have two ways that you can go about it. The first one is if you want a fast drop, but you still want a cohesive drop, you are going to go ahead and ask all your Valkyries to regroup at a waypoint. So right here, the example will be platoon waypoint. So all Valkyries start getting airborne. If you guys don't have a Valkyrie, spawn one or get into one and start getting airborne around platoon waypoint. And as soon as you start to see, uh, you know, a good amount of your platoon on the Valkyries, a good way for you guys to do that is basically to just go to your platoon tab real quick. So as a platoon leader, you go to social, go to your platoon tab, and you can click on the squads and see the little Valkyrie icon on the sides of the names there to see how much of your platoon is actually inside of the Valkyries. And as soon as you judge that you have a good critical mass, you switch platoon waypoints. So we are going to drop in, in here, and then you move out. Everybody move out. Let's move all Valkyries. And then from there, it's just dropping and putting up beacons. Because the Valkyrie is a less cohesive way to do it, you're going to want to put beacons up as soon as you make a way there to get the other people that didn't make it. Now, guys, you don't need to drop here. It was just an example. You fly by, you drop everyone. Yes, just like this. And that's a much, much faster way to do it. Now, you can also do this without necessarily regrouping. You can just ask for your entire platoon to pull Valkyries, as many of them as you can, and just drop into the point you want, just to jump into the point and get the timer going. Uh, that is especially useful for back caps. If you have a large Zerg moving into a base and you want to back cap the Zerg before they hit the point, you can just ask for Valkyries and drop some people onto that point just to get the back cap going, uh, to get the timer going. Uh, a few of you guys probably saw that very well this week when we did our uh, Whiskey Storm Core event. And we were just using Valkyries to go back and forward and just dropping very fast between bases to keep the timers and the back caps going. Uh, you can also see this being used very much by the Hunter Killers uh, in SKL. That's the more competitive branch of SKL and also by any other competitive outfit out there. VKTZ does it a lot, uh, B-Way does it a lot, because it is technically the fastest, w fastest way to get your platoon from point A to point B. So it is just spamming Valkyries and getting your platoon to point and dropping beacons up. So this is how you do it if you don't want to waste any time with a galaxy drop. But again, it's going to be tied to platoon cohesion. Uh, if your platoon is not as cohesive, if it has a lot of random players and a lot of new players, you might not be able to get a lot of people to join in the Valk drop. So anyone, any questions about the Valk drop? Uh, there's a question in um, platoon chat I think you missed uh, about Valkyries and using specialists on that. Um, is it is it Can you spawn in enemy territories using that, using the implant? Yeah, so the Valkyrie, uh, in regards to spawning on it, it works exactly the same way as the Galaxy does. You don't need the logistics specialist, it comes with it passively. So even anyone in the squad, even in enemy, enemy territory, even okay. hostile, yeah. anywhere on the map, like, have if you have a squad get Valkyrie up, you should be able to, to respawn into that squad Valkyrie from anywhere on your map. So you okay. don't necessarily need to run logistics specialist. And you guys remember, you are always going to see your Valkyries on the top left side of your redeploy screen. So always remember, guys, to look for your squad logistics options. And they are going to be the first ones on the top left side of your screen once you're redeploying. You are always going to be, uh, be, be able to see the Valkyries up there, right? One additional point is uh, if you have a Valkyrie or better yet a, 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 a Galaxy, you, if they're high enough and there's no anti-air, you can actually just use it as a s continuous spawn point if you have no other options, if there's no anti-air taking it out. But like Hassan is actually more pli uh, plausible. You can hide above the trees and use it as a spawn location for your squad. Yeah, I... I on Hassan, I like to apply uh, hover stability and 
hide in the tree. You yes, stealth. you can do that too. And uh, yeah, and by supporting them also by using scout radar. But that True. is rare to get to wait to get to do that because a lot of times there's other vehicles, ground, anti-air. But in Hostens is where you're most likely to be able to use it as a a redeployable location. Well, and if you're running stealth, guys, as long as you guys the gun, you won't show up on the mini map. Yeah, you yeah, guys. You don't have to see as them on the mini map. As a general rule, guys, that's why you should try to avoid regrouping, like I mentioned. Uh, only do it if you think you're safe enough and you have enough time. But in general, it is better to just spawn your Valkyries and fly straight to the point. Like, it doesn't matter if you die on the way, if you take damage. You only care about getting to the point fast and putting up something up there as quickly as you can. So, uh, that's basically how it goes. Uh, now we're gonna be moving over here guys because we are running short here and I want to make sure I'm done with this uh, before a few other events pick up uh, so the next tactic that we're gonna be talking about here guys are scythe balls always also called air balls now you guys have probably also been into one of these uh, I know blade likes to do them a lot I like to do them a lot myself I and like basically them a lot. Yeah, basically the idea behind a scythe ball or an air ball, uh, those are two names that means the same way, is that you are going to take your entire platoon and you are going to go take out an enemy bastion fleet carrier. So the idea behind it is you ask your platoon to redeploy everyone to the warp gate, get everyone in scythes, and you guys are going to move in as one on a wave pattern to try to hit the enemy bastion's hard points. So right here we're going to get everyone into scythes, we're going to regroup on platoon waypoint, and we're going to try to get as many scythes as possible. Now guys, for you as a platoon leader, you should always work with a time frame. So if you are pulling a uh, scythe ball on an air ball, you are going to be saying, hey guys, we're moving out in 30 seconds, you all have 30 seconds to get here, regroup at platoon waypoint, everybody get in here. Uh, and then you wait, you see how many people are responding, you wait to see how many scythes you get. And in general, if you are doing a scythe ball, you are also going to be communicating that uh, in most situations in command chat, but in a few situations you can also say it on outfit chat to try to get the maximum number of players in here. And the idea is to punch through the Bastion's defense, if there is any, uh, through your numbers and also melt down the, the hard points life uh, by sheer you know amount of firepower that you're bringing in so you regroup everyone as soon as you see that you have a good amount of scythes in the sky you mark the platoon the the bastion with platoon waypoint everybody you're clear to take off let's move out everyone do not collapse into each other try to avoid collisions guys let's hit max altitude Guys, again, this is just for training. In here, you can't fly max altitude because you're going to hit the ceiling. There is a solid ceiling here in VR training, so try not to hit it. But tell everyone to stay on the max altitude. Now, once you start getting close to the bastion, you should start saying, hey, guys, stay away. You know, engage from a distance. Do not kamikaze into the points. Start shooting into the bastion. Uh, and then you, as a platoon leader, you are going to be calling out the hard points on the Bastion, right? So the way the Bastion's hard, hard points works, guys, is they do not regenerate. They have no regeneration on the life points, but each hard point has a shield. So every time you are hitting a Bastion hard point, you're going to be first damaging the shield and then damaging the life. The shield does regenerate after some time. So if each and every one of you are hitting different hard points, they're going to be regenerating and you're wasting all that damage. So you as a platoon leader, it's your job to call out the hard points you guys are going to be focusing. And the hard points goes as follows. So these are the names for all the hard points, guys. Try to remember these because they're very important. So you start with the front ones that are going to be on the top side uh, and they are on the deck. So you basically have front back top you also have back back top and you can use those uh, to call the two hard points that are on the main deck of the the thing and then going a little bit more on the back of the ship you have both left and right wings those are the two ones that are on the sides of the bastion 
and then you have both right and left engines and those are the ones that are directly above the engines so you have left and right wing and left and right engine and then top deck front uh, and top deck back those are the two ones that are on the front and then you have the bottom ones and they're just bottom front and bottom back and those are the call outs for all the hard points on the bastion you guys need to make sure you are focusing the ones that you're being told to it, they're not they're not hard to find guys just by listening to the call outs you guys should be able to identify them on a bastion uh, and they're gonna be very easy to take out as long as you guys focus the hard points now on a scythe ball uh, or on an air ball you guys want to be as quick as possible so it's gonna be up for the platoon leader to decide if he wants to engage an armor uh, a bastion fleet escort force or if you guys just want to suicide yourselves and try to do as much damage to the Bastion as possible. And in case a Bastion fleet carrier ends up uh, repelling you guys, if you die and you need to regroup, you can send another wave, but you always need to remember that you don't want to waste too much time. All the time you keep your platoon in the air trying to take out an enemy Bastion, it's time you guys are not putting on the alert on the ground. So always keep that in mind. If you guys are going for a bastion, try to be quick about it. Uh, and if you need to regroup, pull from whatever closest base you have, regroup in a platoon waypoint, and then start moving out once again. Sounds good? Yep. yep. So, any questions about this topic, guys, make them only if you guys are objectively, because uh, we have another training session that's coming up here, and it's actually tied very well to this one, and I don't want to waste any more time in here. So. Any other questions about an air ball, a scythe ball? Sounds good. Okay, everyone, so I'm going to be going over this one real quick here just to explain to you guys what it is because you might end up hearing it or you might see it in-game at some point. And the last tactic that's related to air that we're going to talk about is a galaxy ball, also called a battle gal. So the idea behind a battle galaxy is that you are going to use a galaxy as basically a weapons platform for you to bombard a specific position. So you will need a galaxy with bulldogs equipped, uh, usually more than one galaxy. You are going to be running repair on all the galaxies. So if you guys don't know about this, your galaxy can have in your uh, defense slot you can have a, a proximity repair module that's basically the same thing that you have in the Sunder and you're going to be repairing uh, galaxies that are close to you and basically what you go ahead and you do from there is you pull a bunch of galaxies with the Bulldogs you stay in a closed formation and you use the Bulldogs to bombard a, a camp spawn point so basically if you have a spawn, uh, spawn room that's very exposed to air you can lock that point room down by using the galaxies as a buffer. So they're going to keep repairing each other. They have a large pool size, uh, a large health pool, uh, so you can stay alive for a long time. And it can be used to devastating effect, but it also requires a lot of cohesion. So it's more of a mention to you guys. It's not something we use a lot uh, in our public platoons, but it is nice for you guys to know that it exists and it is an effective tactic. Uh, if used correctively, uh, correctly. So, uh, I'm going to be moving over to the last topic here, guys, uh, and that's going to be armor. Now, uh, before we move, uh, is there any questions about air in general, air tactics, uh, anything related to air? As you guys could see, air is primarily going to be used as a transport system for our platoons. Uh, and they should be done with cohesion and speed in mind. So, any questions? Sounds good. Okay, everyone, we're going to be moving over to armor. Now, we're going to be talking in general terms here, guys. Uh, and I'm going to be very clear with you guys. In SKL, every time you guys are going to be playing armor every time uh, we are going to be pulling armor doing an alert uh, and we are still trying to go for the objective play 
we are going to be using it with a very specific objective in mind and only with that objective in mind. As a general rule, it is good to avoid getting stuck into an armor fight uh, because it is not, you know, as effective for the general end game, that is the alert, as the other tactics that you can implement as a platoon. So the situations where you will want to pull uh, an armor uh, column will be limited, but they will be very useful when they come into play. So a few situations for you guys to use armor columns will be First, if you want to dislodge the enemy and its logistics. So if the enemy has a lot of armor around the base that you are defending and they have several deployed sunders all around, you see multiple sunders in different locations around the base, that's when an armor column is at its best. You're going to use the armor column to wipe the enemy defensive armor and then destroy the sunders that are around the base. Uh, a second and third uh, ways for you to use an armor column would be to use them as a buffer to stop the enemy before they hit your base. So if you have a zerg incoming to your base, you can preemptively pull an armor column to try to stop that zerg on the road to the base before they can set up logistics. However, as you guys just saw in the previous topic here, if you are fighting against a cohesive force with just a few brain cells, they can just pull a few Valkyries or a Galaxy and drop behind your lines, rendering your entire armor column completely ineffective. So you should be careful whenever you are using it. Uh, it is good in dealing with specific situations, but they can be, you know, just completely useless in other situations as well. Now, if you guys are pulling an armor column uh, for its, you know, best objective that would be for killing Sunders, here's how you go about it. As a platoon leader, you are going to ask your entire platoon to redeploy, not to the base you want to defend, but to a neighboring base. So you are going to try to find a base with a good, you know, a good uh, route of attack for the enemy armor that's camping your base right now. Uh, maybe something behind the enemy armor or maybe something on the side of the enemy armor. You are going to be regrouping your platoon in there. And as a platoon leader, just like with your infantry platoon, you are going to be calling for the armor composition that you want. Now, the armor column composition is going to be directly tied to your objective. And I'm going to give you guys a few examples of compositions here for you guys to use in your armor. Uh, the first key feature will be anti-aircraft. Those will include AA Sunders and also Skyguards. So if you are seeing a lot of aircraft around, that is especially true if you are fighting TR. TR usually has a lot of aircraft. You are going to be asking for a few Skyguards for your armor column. So whenever you are asking, you are going to go ahead and say, Hey guys, let's pull an armor column. I want to see a few Skyguards here with us uh, just to make sure we have the air covered. So a few of you guys go ahead and pull a Skyguard. That should be enough to cover for your AA basis. Uh, another good example would be Repair Sunders. Now, Repair Sunders are especially effective if you are going to do an armor versus armor engagement. So if you are going to be using your armor to engage other enemy armor, it is best for you to have several Repair Sunders to make sure you are covering your armor as you advance. So if you see a lot of enemy resistance and lots of enemy vanguards, lots of enemy prowlers, go ahead and ask for a few repairing sunders. So guys, let's pull some repair sunders to support the armor. And the last piece of equipment that you're going to request for your armor columns will be ammo, uh, ammo sunders. So basically ammunition for your armor column. But ammunition is very specifically designed for long-term engagements. So only pull ammo sunders if you guys are planning on keeping your armor column alive for an extended period of time. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be useless to have the, arm the ammo sunder running around. Uh, now, right after you have all that, you have your armor column regroup. You're going to go ahead and treat it just like you guys treat your normal platoon. You're going to give the platoon waypoint. Everybody, let's move out. Let's regroup. Make sure you are telling your platoon to play defensive and engage from afar if that's what you want, if you're trying to keep, keep your armor column concise and, you know, 
not have everyone suicide as quickly as you can. Try to stay yourself as the platoon leader in the head of the armor column giving directions and call out enemy armor that's approaching you guys for focus. So focus on an armor column is also very important just like with the air ball, the scythe ball. Uh, and the first thing that you guys should try to focus are the repair sunders. So every time you see a repair sunder, ask everyone, everyone focus the repair sunder and you can even call out the name of the player on the repair sunder that you want dead first if you want to kill that. As a general rule, once again, remember to always use your compass on the map for calling out enemy armor. So you can see on the top of your minimap you have the directions there and that's what you guys are going to be using for calling out enemy armor. I never want to hear you guys in an SKL platoon saying hey there's enemy armor over there by that tree. What tree? You know, you, you can't find targets using that. You, you guys should always use the directionals. So enemy armor to the south, enemy armor to the south and now you guys have a better idea of where I'm talking about. So that's how you should call out stuff while running armor. Uh, now, I'm not going to go too much into depth here about the armor. Hopefully, we're going to have the Armor Academy in SKL soon to talk about specifics about armor. Uh, but I want to talk about one final thing, and that's about killing enemy sunders. So if you guys are just pulling an armor column to kill enemy sunders, here's how you should go about it. First off, as a platoon leader, you are going to look at the base timer. As you guys know, an armor column takes time as well. It takes time to organize. It takes time for it to work, for it to be effective. So you guys are going to start by looking around the timer and seeing if you have more than three minutes to go around killing enemy sunders. If you don't, if the base is going down fast, you should instead take your platoon and go take care of the point. Buy a few more minutes as a buffer for you to be able to then move outside and have enough time to come back in and save the point after you cleared out the sunders, right? So as long as you have enough time, you can go ahead and ask, ask your platoon to pull armor to go kill the enemy sunders. And the most effective way to do it, guys, everybody fall back to the terminals here, the most effective way for you to pull armor to kill sunders is just to pull a massive amount of Viper Lightnings. And the Viper Lightnings are the standard guns, like just the basic standard Lightning. That is the best way to kill enemy Sunders. Because basically what you guys are going to be doing, if you are just there to kill enemy logistics, is you guys are going to be suiciding yourselves, just basically rushing forward as fast as you can and throwing all that armor into the enemy. So, if you guys pull uh, Viper Lightnings, the Vipers have the highest DPS out of any uh, tanks, uh, you know, outside of a double manned uh, Mag Rider. So, you can just pull a bunch of standard stock Lightnings and suicide yourselves into the enemy Sunders. It should take only two to four uh, Lightnings for you to kill a shielded Sunder. So if you have four lightnings, you will definitely be able to loop down a shielded sunder and kill it extremely fast by just unloading uh, the viper onto it. So that's the best way for you guys to use an armor column to kill enemy sunders and the most effective way to do it uh, in the lowest amount of time. So make sure you are telling your platoon all the details. Make sure you are coordinating with your platoon. As soon as you see four Viper lightnings moving out that should be enough for you to you know just go ahead and nuke an enemy sunder if necessary so anyone that's going to be it for armor columns i'm not as i said i'm not going to go too in depth uh, about armor columns tonight does anyone has any questions about it any questions about the armor columns guys and the effective way to use them Okay, everyone. If we yep. yep, we don't have any questions here, guys. I'm gonna be done with tonight's training session quick here, uh, and that is especially because I believe Jinx is running right now the Air Academy training session. So I want a few of you guys to catch that if you can. 
uh, Jinx is right now teaching you guys how to fly scythes. So if any of you guys want to go ahead and jump into that right now, uh, you can learn how to pilot from the basics, you know, from just flying around all the way up to dogfighting. Uh, so if you guys want to learn how to become a better pilot, I believe that training session is starting right now. So you guys still have time to jump into that. And also, Flip Kick is running a 24-hour platoon. So the 24-hour platoon, the Endless Crusade, is running right now. And it is a way, guys, for us to, you know, gather more people for our new world. Uh, I think it's a company. So, like, the new world SKL official company that's going to be launching with the game. So, if any of you guys are going to be playing new world, the new Amazon MMORPG, you can also find us in there. And that's why we're doing the for our crusade. So, now you guys have two other events that you can attend. Thank you all for your attention here. Thank you all for participating, guys. I hope you guys learned something new here tonight. Or if you didn't learn anything new, that maybe you learned it better, you know, how to properly do something in here. And I hope to see you guys on the next one. I will be hanging around here for a few more minutes if you guys want to talk, but that's...